All right. Uh, so I've been living in New York for almost a decade, but actually only nine years. So I don't think that I'm a real New Yorker yet. Uh, but one more year to go. But uh, one of my favorite things about New York is that it's this giant city, but that it's also like a collection of many, many small villages. And it's lovely to be in Gowanus tonight. Kitchen Surfing spent uh, its first two like super formative years, actually six blocks up the street. Uh, and so we just recently moved to Manhattan. So it's nice to be back in the neighborhood. Um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna, I guess where should I start? When we first started Kitchen Surfing, uh, you know, we had these kind of crazy ideas about what we were going to do. We were going to unbundle all the food services and that sort of the business. But there was also this kind of like bigger push behind that idea, which is that the future looks a lot like the past. And, you know, what that really meant to us at the time is that one of the most important things around food is about the human connection to food and the connection to other people through food. And that if you take those sort of trends and where those are going, what that actually means is that like the future looks a lot more like this like hyper interconnected village, sort of mediated in some ways by technology, rather than this very sort of like insular little nuclear suburban existence that a lot of us have been living for the past 50 years. So uh, when we started Kitchen Surfing, we had no product. We had a sign-up form for chefs. And we were just kind of beginning to get going. And I think we'd literally been working on this thing for like four weeks at the point that Hurricane Sandy happened. And like all of New York, we sort of ground to a halt. We weren't quite sure what was going to happen next. And then we started to see this really, really interesting behavior. And what we saw was that we were like, look at these chefs that had signed up on Kitchen Surfing and they were participating in these Facebook groups that we had created, even though we didn't even have a product yet and like nothing existed. And a couple of the chefs had grown up in the Rockaways and they were kind of doing their own like indie relief missions uh, down to the Rockaways to actually cook hot food for people that needed it. And we saw that happening we we're kind of sitting there like, shit, what are we gonna do? Like, can we help these guys out? Is there something we can do? What, what are we going to do here? We don't even have any software, like what's possible? And we decided to ask our chefs if they wanted to volunteer to start with. And we got back to like overwhelming response. Like I think at that point in time, we'd had 400 or 500 chefs sign up in the first you know, couple of weeks that we'd launched the service. And like 200 of them were like, yes, sign me up, tell me where to show up, what am I gonna do? And then we were like, well, well great. Uh, we need places for them to cook, what's gonna happen? We asked the chef community, they responded back, oh, there's this church that I go to that has a commissary. Oh, there's this commissary that I use all the time. And all of a sudden, we started getting spaces donated to us with time slots and chefs with time slots. And so with just a little bit of spreadsheet magic, uh, we're kind of able to put together this like, weird little ad hoc relief effort. And then because we're web nerds, the thing that we did was we put up a web page and basically started asking everybody that we knew to give us money so that we could pay for ingredients for these chefs to go do their thing. We didn't know Farmigo yet. Uh, and um, we managed to raise you know, ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 in a relatively short period of time just from people that were like, this is awesome. And the thing that kind of happened next was incredible, which is that this weird patchwork mediation, like a group of people sort of coming together, lending each other their sugar, so to speak, uh, created this kind of amazing ad hoc relief effort where uh, over a period of about seven days, they fed about 20,000 people. And uh, they were able to feed people at a cost of about 50 cents a meal, um, which is compared to about five bucks for what the Red Cross uh, and what the city of New York was able to do. And we just kind of kept that going, you know, up until the point where people were kind of like replaced in housing. And I guess the moral of that story and, and kind of where it ended that is like, if that's what the future of like a global village looks like, uh, where people kind of come together and you use technology to allow people to be more human, uh, sign me up. That's it.